Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. I'm Mackie Hall, and today we're going to take a step back to the basics and learn the scale and rotate tools. Not only will this be fun, but it is a can't miss skill set for beginner and intermediate users. Let's go. Okay, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new document. Our document is going to be 1,000 points wide by 1,000 points tall. We'll have a single artboard and we'll have the RGB color mode. Okay, before we get started, I want to remind you that we'll be using the Essentials layout. To see the Essentials layout, go to the top right hand corner of your screen and select Essentials. Next, I want to remind you that we'll be using Smart Guides. To select Smart Guides, select View and scroll down to Smart Guides or click on Control U. Finally, we'll be using the bottom of the page to share tips and tricks along with key command recommendations. All right, let's get started. First thing we'll do is we'll select our rectangle tool. We'll click anywhere on the page. We'll create a square 200 points wide by 200 points tall. Select OK. Once done with that, we want to horizontally align our shape to the middle of the page, and we'll do the same thing vertically. We do this by going to the top of the bar and clicking horizontal align and vertical align as well. If you don't happen to see your align keys, you can always open the align window by selecting window, align, or shift F7. First thing we'll do is we'll grab the selection tool. And using this tool, we can scale in a number of different ways. Notice if we hover over the right side of our shape, we get directional errors. We can click and drag, and it will scale in that direction. We'll undo by hitting Control-Z, and we'll do the same thing vertically. We can click and drag, and we can scale non-proportionately in that direction. Let's undo by hitting Control-Z one more time. If we want to scale from a corner, we can do the same thing by clicking and dragging from the corner. Again, notice that it is non-proportional. If we want to do a proportional scale, we can go to a corner, click and start dragging out, but this time we're going to hold the Shift key. Watch what happens. Right away, our shape becomes proportional. Let's undo that. Another thing we can do is we can scale from center. The way we do that is we can click and drag on a corner, and we can press the Alt key. Notice now we are scaling non-proportionately from the middle. If we want to scale proportionately from the middle, along with the Alt key, let's press the Shift key. Notice right away, our shape is scaling proportionately from the middle. Let's undo. In our shape, let's change our stroke thickness to 10 points. Let's deselect our shape by clicking anywhere on our page. Now what if we want more control? The way to do that is let's select the Scale tool itself. Now that our Scale tool is selected, the way we select our shape is we press the Control key to bring up our Selection tool. We can click on the shape. Once we've done that, we don't need to click on the shape anymore to scale it. All we need to do is click anywhere on the page and drag in the direction we want to go. Using our Scale tool, our shape will scale always from the middle. Let's undo that. If we want to scale in proportion, again, we select the Shift key and click and drag out. Notice I'll press the Shift key now, and our shape scales proportionately. If we go towards the middle, notice our scale shapes proportionately horizontal, and if we go to the top, our shape scales proportionately vertical. Again, if we drag to the corner, our shape is again scaling proportionately across the board. Let's undo that. Notice that while we were scaling, however, that our stroke did not scale. We can do that with the Scale tool by doing the following. We'll double click on our Scale tool. Notice the Scale window pops up just like that. This is also a great tool because we can scale to exact dimensions. For example, if we want to scale our shape to 50%, no, we'll click Preview here. We can enter 50% under Uniform. And we tab off it. Again, our shape has not changed. However, our shape is uniformly scaled to 50% so we can see what it looks like. We can also do non-uniform scaling 
If we want to scale our shape only vertically 50%, we can size our horizontal scaling to 100%, and we can tab to that. We can also copy our scale shape too. If I click copy right here, notice what it did was it kept our original piece intact and created a scaled copy of our shape. Let's delete the copy. Let's select our shape once again with the scale tool already selected. Again, what we'll do is we'll press control and we'll click on our shape. Once that's done, let's double click on our scale tool. We'll select the uniform scale and we'll bring it back to 100% just to get started. Tab off that. Now, another thing we can do is we can scale corners under options and we can also scale strokes and effects. This is a hugely powerful tool because then our entire shape scales in proportion, not just the dimensions, but everything inside. For example, if we wanna scale our shape up 200% uniformly, let's write it in, we'll tab off of it. Notice right away, our shape scales up. However, our strokes do not. If we go under options and select scale strokes and effects, note what happens to our shape. Please also note that our preview button is still selected. Right away, our scale stroke increases by 200% along with our shape. Let's cancel that. What about rotate? Rotating is simple, and we can do that again using our general selection tool. The way we do that is we hover over the corners of our shapes, and you'll notice you get the rotate icon all around our shape. All we need to do at that point, once our icon appears, is click and drag. Notice our shape is rotating as we rotate. Let's undo that. What if we want to rotate to specific dimensions? Well, if we want to rotate in 45 degree increments, we can always press our shift key. Take note, I'm gonna click and start dragging from the corner. Note what happens when I press the shift key. Let's undo that. Note straight away that our shape rotates in 45 degree increments. This is even more visible when we create a rectangle. Let's delete our square. We'll grab a rectangle tool. We'll click anywhere on screen once again, and we'll change our width to 200 and our height to 100 points. Let's center horizontally and vertically once again, and let's rotate. Again, using our selection tool. Hover over a corner, wait for the icon to pop up, and now let's hold our shift key, and you'll notice straight away our shape is rotating in 45 degree increments. Let's rotate it 90 degrees and click off of our shape. Now we can do the same thing using our rotate tool. If we click on our rotate tool, we can select our element once again by holding the control key, clicking on our shape, and now once again, we don't need to hover over our shape. Because our shape is selected, we can just click and drag as we see fit. Again, I'll click and start dragging around, and we can drag as far as we need to go. Again, if we hold our shift key down, our shape rotates in 45 degree increments. Let's rotate it 90 degrees just like that. Note that when we have our rotation tool in effect, at the center of our selected objects, let's zoom in by entering Control plus, there is a rotate center. This is hugely powerful because now we can assign a center to the object we're rotating. This is really powerful if we want to rotate our objects around a circle, perhaps. Let's zoom out and I'll show you an example. With our object selected, we can hover over the center of our piece and let's hold down the Alt button. When we press the Alt button, we give ourselves access to the rotate center. Let's click and drag, and let's hold our shift key and drag it straight down to about there. Now when we do that, the rotate window immediately pops up. Now what's cool about this is, now we can start moving our shape around that center. For example, if we want to rotate our object 90 degrees, all we need to do is enter 90 degrees under our angle and rotate it. And our shape moves 90 degrees just like that. Let's undo this. All right, let's undo our changes. What if we want to rotate our object around an axis? 
The first thing we'll do is we'll hover over our rotate center, we'll press our Alt button, and we'll drag our center down somewhere beneath our rectangle. We'll leave it about that. Notice that our rotate angle pops up straight away. What we can do here is if we want to do it in 45 degree increments, we can write in 45, and instead of selecting OK, what we're going to do is press Copy. Notice our first copy started at around the center axis. Now let's go ahead, instead of copying our shape around and trying to do that, what we can also do is press Control D. That duplicates our previous action. Let's press Control D around the circle. Let's zoom out. And notice straight away that we've rotated our shape around a specific axis. Let's take it one step further. Let's bring our entire page into view by hitting Control-0, and let's select all of our shapes by hitting Control-A and deleting. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to click and hold our rectangle tool until our star tool becomes visible. Let's select that. Once we've done that, let's click anywhere on the page. And let's create a star with an initial radius of 25 points and a second radius of 10 points. Let's keep five points. Let's click OK. Once done with that, let's make our stroke transparent and our fill black. We do this by double clicking our fill, making it black, clicking OK, and then selecting our stroke and pressing the transparency icon directly beneath. Once done with that, let's hold our shift key and arrow our shape up to the top of the page somewhere. Shift key moves elements in 10 point increments. You can also click and drag directly vertically holding the shift key. Once we're done with that, let's select our rotate tool. And again, you'll see our rotate center. What we're going to do is we're going to hold our alt key once again, click and drag our rotate center down somewhere towards the middle of the page. That works right there. Notice straight away our object starts to rotate, and it rotates based on the previous angle we entered. Before we do anything, what we're going to do is remember we want to rotate this shape around a circle. One thing I do know is I want 40 stars around the circle. So here's how we rotate our star around an axis 40 times. Instead of figuring out the angle and breaking out the calculator, what we'll do is write 360 divided by 40, just like that. And instead of selecting OK, once again, we'll select Copy. Once we've done that, what we want to do is we want to press Control D to copy and rotate our element all the way around that axis. Let's get started. Again, we're just pressing Control D repeatedly. So there you go. Let's deselect by pressing Control and selecting anywhere on screen off of our artwork. One last thing when we talk about scaling and rotating our shapes is we can also do it with multiple objects and group objects. For example, let's grab our selection tool. Let's click and drag across our entire group of shapes. Notice that we have our selection box around all of the elements. That means I can click on a corner and drag it in, and we can scale non-proportionately. Of course, if we hold our Shift key down, we're scaling proportionately. Let's drag out and undo. If we hold both our Shift and Alt keys, and again, select the corner and drag in, we are scaling proportionately towards the center of the object, or from the center of the object. Let's click and release, and let's undo. As far as rotating goes, the same thing applies. Just using our selection tool, we can hover over an edge and we can rotate the entire group as long as everything is selected. Let's undo that. Note we can also do the same thing for parts of it. Last thing we'll do is we'll click anywhere on the page to deselect, and we are done. There you go. The scale and rotate tools are such fundamental skills and so necessary for users to master. Now it's your turn. See what you can do to practice and take your skills to the next level. Take a look at my next piece, 
to create a radical shape using these exact skills. So there you have it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like. I'd really appreciate that. Otherwise, subscribe. I'd appreciate that just a little bit more. We'll see you next time. See you.